He's sure come a long way from being a TV weatherman in Indiana. But NBC's late night crazy man, David Letterman, doesn't do it all alone. Tonight, Denise takes us to 30 Rock, that's NBC's headquarters, for a behind the scenes look at who's responsible for this creative craziness. Things might look quiet right now here on the set of Late Night with David Letterman, but the midnight oil often burns bright here on the sixth floor at 30 Rock, especially for a duo of daffy designers who make the gadgets for Dave's giggly gags. <laughs> It seems there's nothing too bizarre, too outrageous, or too gimmicky for David Letterman and the folks at NBC's Late Night Comedy Show. These guys will do anything for a laugh, and it's the people who make these wacky props who turn the writers' big ideas into big fun. Usually the writers have no idea how something will really work. They just want this finished effect, and then that's where we come in. It's really making all of the ideas work. I just don't know what kind of a uh, thing to use for to get that sort of poof that, you know, Steve uh -huh. Putman's drawing. Uh -huh. I don't know if that's... Jeremy Conway and Kathleen Ankers designed the props and the pranks for Late Night. This is the same team responsible for dressing David Letterman in a suit of potato chips and dipping him in yogurt. They even found new uses for Velcro. If the writers ask for it, these guys will find a way to make it happen. When they bring you ideas, do you yourselves go, are you out of your mind, or do you, do you get... Oh, never out loud. <laughs> <laughs> we probably consider that very often, but never say it. Kathleen and Jeremy have probably the wackiest job in the Big Apple, and possibly in show business. Day after day, and sometimes all night long, you'll find them here in the NBC building developing the latest weapons in the late night arsenal of killer jokes. So Kathleen, what do you think about this bazooka? It's just a, you know, slingshot. We haven't shown this to Jean yet, have we? No. No, but I think you've got it. It's a bazooka that fires underwear. Oh. And it's the Tom Jones panty zooka so that middle-aged ladies can fire their underwear at a cut out of Tom Jones who will be up on the stage. This is the Oral Roberts money bank. That's like those old banks that they had. Those like old, the old uh, banks, that's exactly iron. right. And bank. as when the penny or whatever it is drops in here, Oral Roberts will come down to earth again. Come back down for the money. Yeah. No project is too big for this design team. I mean, space shuttle parts wouldn't survive the kind of scrutiny and testing that these props go through. This one's great. They always seem to give us what we want, uh, uh, partly, I think, because they're very skilled and very competent and, and, and uh, Partly because I think they're nuts. So how'd you like it, Steve? Well, it's plenty big. The last word on all props goes to head writer Steve O'Donnell, who sometimes gets a dose of his own medicine from the creations he's cooked up. I actually came perilously close to uh, to uh, 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 buying the farm, testing the Alka-Seltzer suit once, because you drop some Alka-Seltzers in water, they suck the oxygen out of the air above. You hold a, a match over a glass of Alka-Seltzer, it'll go out. But uh, we sort of forgot about that, so as I was lowered in and then lowered up, I just started getting sort of red in the face, not because there was anything toxic, but there was just no oxygen above the tank. It would have been the silliest obituary in the world, you know, testing giant suit of Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> you know, 30-year-old man dies in NBC building. Across the hall from the late night studios, Kathleen and Jeremy keep their prized collection of some of the show's best and worst. This is our Joe Seisman pencil sharpener. I think this at one point was a, um, a dachshund disguise for a pack of dynamite. This was really one of our favorites. It was making a diaper changer out of a uh, uh, hand towel dispenser from a service station restroom or something for your kid. Oh. And it worked <laughs> just as well. <laughs> this was a particularly lovely thing. The only thing is I cannot remember what the joke was now. This was a foaming at the mouth dog, and we had shaving cream in the back, and David pulled the string, 
and all this shaving cream dripped out. Diaper changer. The end result, comedy. And they have to get results fast. Sometimes they may not find out what props are needed until the night before. David Letterman! This is Kathleen Ankers from Late Night, and I'm calling about a dog for Monday's show. Well, why not give your pet the ultimate in napping animal luxury with the Craftmatic Adjustable Dog Bed? No, you very rarely laugh, I think, because you're so anxious about it. Here's how it works. See, this is the green here, and he's like an inch away from the cup. The powerful wind current turns any near miss into money in the bank. I can't think of anything that would be too outrageous for us to not want to try. But otherwise, I'd just say it's the limit of our imaginations. Oh, and also the limit of our studio doors, which are only about seven feet tall. With the supercharged monster tire push mower. There it is. Kathleen, is this one of your latest gadgets? This is a pit bull office stapler. Something everyone needs. Absolutely. Is it something you think that David might send to management when it's finished? Possibly. <laughs> Obviously, insanity is the mother of invention here. Thanks, Denise. That's just what I need for Christmas, a pit bull stapler. <laughs> we'll have more in a moment when evening comes right back.